In this video, I'll demonstrate how to perform data analysis for your ELISA using MyAssays desktop. ELISAs are commonly used assays to complete laboratory data analysis. MyAssays desktop has several pre-configured protocols for commercially available ELISAs, but there is also a general ELISA protocol included that can serve as a template, allowing you to make changes to quickly adapt the protocol to fit your needs. In the MyAssays desktop explorer, I can open the Protocols tab and select the ELISA protocol. Once I've selected the protocol in the right-hand pane, I can see a description of the protocol. I can click Launch to open the protocol, or I can just double-click. Once the protocol is open, we can see on the left-hand side of the screen the various tabs that will allow us to configure our data, plate layout, add standard concentrations and dilution factors, and add our sample IDs. Let's start with the Measurements tab. Here you can see the pad view, which displays the raw results for each position arranged in a 12 by 8 format. On the right hand side of the screen, you can see the plate layout with the raw data arranged with the different colors corresponding to different sample types. You can also view this information as a heat map, which colors the cells based on their results, with red corresponding to higher raw results and green corresponding to lower raw results. You can also view this information in 3D by toggling between these buttons. Click and drag on the screen to rotate the view. The plate view will display the data in the plate layout format with editable cells. The plate IDs tab will show the plate IDs. On the pad view, you can choose to copy and paste in your data or you could choose to use the import wizard and follow the steps to import your data into the protocol. You can see when we open the import wizard, we also have the opportunity not only to import your measurements, but also the standard concentrations, dilution factors, sample IDs, and plate IDs. For more information about how to use the import wizard, please see the video surrounding that topic. Under the microplate tab, you can select a plate layout that matches your assay. If a matching template is not available, you can choose to edit an existing layout or to create a new layout. You can also manage the sample types used in the assay by clicking the Sample Types button. If you choose to edit or create a layout, the Layout Editor will open. You can clear the layout, erase specific samples, and fill with samples of your choice. For more information on how to use the Plate Layout Editor, please see the additional video on that topic. Once we're satisfied with the Plate Layout, we can move to the Standard Concentrations tab. Here we can define the concentrations of our standards. You'll see visual feedback in the pane on the right-hand side of the screen. With the Series Mode turned on, all the standard samples will flash. And with the Series Mode turned off, only the standard that's currently selected will flash. With the series mode, you can specify a starting concentration and using the settings on the right, you can define how the next standard in the series should be calculated. For example, I could set my first standard concentration to be 500. And once I click enter, each subsequent standard has been divided by two. By clicking the series button to turn the series mode off, I can individually define my standards if they don't follow a set series, or I can choose to copy and paste in the values from another application such as Excel. On the Dilution Factors tab, we can define the dilution factor for each unknown. You can again use the Series function or copy and paste in the dilution factors from another application. You'll also notice the visual feedback is again provided in the right-hand side of the screen. On the Sample IDs tab, you can enter individual sample IDs, or you can copy and paste them in from another application. Under the Properties tab, we can see the settings used for our data analysis. Under the Transforms tab, we can see the various transforms that perform the data analysis stepwise. First, you'll see a blank correction transform. This will subtract the average value of the blank wells from the rest of the wells on the plate. This transform is formatted to only perform a blank correction if your plate layout contains a blank group. Next, we'll see the standard curve fit transform. 
This will plot the raw results against the defined concentrations using a specified curve fit to interpolate the concentrations of the other samples, like your controls and unknowns. You can define various settings in the standard curve fit transform, like the axes, titles, and types, the standard sample type and concentrations, what points to include on the curve, whether to calculate from replicates or average, the fit method, weighting models, X and Y transforms, and your accuracy and precision quantification limits. Next, you'll see the dilutions factor transform, which will contain the same information as the dilution factors tab. Finally, we have a percent CV transform, which will calculate the percentage coefficient of variation between the replicates of our samples. This is a useful measure of precision and can be used to identify sample preparation issues. The matrices tab will show the various raw and calculated matrices in a tree format in the pane on the left hand side of the screen. By selecting these matrices, you can change the associated settings. Remember that matrices are containers that hold specific types of data. The raw matrix is the data that is imported into the protocol from your reader, and the calculated matrices are the results of the various transforms. You can use the evaluation and validation tabs to set up various evaluation and validation tables. Evaluations are useful for reporting various values from your protocols, including transform output variables or TOVs. Validations can be used to ensure that certain criteria are met, such as making sure that your controls fall within a specified range or that your R squared is greater than 0.9. Using the Report tab, you'll see your report elements listed in the pane on the left-hand side of the page in the order they will appear on your report. By clicking on a report element, you can specify associated settings and reorder the elements by using these arrows. The XML tab is used for specifying advanced settings. We've created in-depth training modules on these topics, so for more information on transforms, matrices, evaluations, validations, and report configuration, please see the associated videos. Now let's use the ELISA protocol to import our data and calculate a report. First, I'll navigate to the Measurements tab. For this example, my data is contained in an Excel document. You can see that it's arranged in a 12 by 8 plate format with some associated metadata. I could just copy and paste my data into the pad, but instead I'll use the import wizard to import the metadata as well. So I'll open the import wizard, select measurements, browse for the file, select next, and now I can highlight the cells that contain my measurement data and optionally choose to configure my metadata. To import my metadata, I'll first need to select the item and next the value. I can continue to do this to import all of my metadata. I'll click Next. Now you can see the data in a pad format plate format, as well as the metadata that we selected. I'll click Finish. And now if we choose to save the protocol, these import settings will be saved for the next time the protocol is used. After we've imported our measurements, you can see the changes to the Measurements tab, and we can select the Microplate tab to change the layout if needed. This layout matches my assay layout, so I'll leave it as is. Next, we can use the Standard Concentrations tab to specify our Standard Concentrations value. I'll enter 500 as my first calibrator, and allow the series to fill the rest of the calibrator values by dividing by a factor of 2. On the Dilution Factors tab, my unknown 1 and 3 have been diluted 1 part sample to 1 part diluent. So I'll enter 2 as the dilution factor for those samples. Finally, I'll import my sample IDs. Again, I could choose to copy and paste or use the import wizard to import my sample IDs file. I'll choose sample IDs, browse for my text file containing the sample IDs, now you can see my sample IDs are ready to be imported, and if we leave this box checked, when we click Finish, the results will be calculated. 
On our report, you can see two different sheets. The first, Results Sheet, contains our results, and the second, the Fit Detail Sheet, contains our fit details. On our Results Sheet, you can see the standard curve fit and our sample table. In the sample table, you can see the sample IDs that we imported, their positions, the dilution factors we entered. You can see the factor 2 for our unknown 1, which is OP1, and unknown 3, which is OP3, the raw results, and then the results of our data calculation, which include blank corrected, the interpolated concentration, the final concentration, which takes into account the dilution factor, and the percent CV. On the fit detail sheet, we can see the calibrator's chart with each row highlighted in green if the accuracy and precision thresholds were met, or in light red if they were not. We can also see the various parameters calculated from the curve, as well as the curve fit equations. If we click on the standard curve fit tab, we can see an interactive chart that will allow us to optionally exclude outliers or save the curve to the library. We can also export our data using these options to open in Excel, Word, or export as a PDF, or we can use the export wizard to export to a custom format. If you have any questions about using the ELISA protocol, please email us at support at myassays.com.